do, 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 do. Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a special project here. I have this uh, get up, it's a get up, get to action camera. It's actually, it's a pretty nice piece of kit here. I think I spent about 120, 150 bucks on it and it can go up to 4K in resolution. Now there's another special trick up this camera's sleeve, which I'll show you all in a little bit. We had to take it apart first in order to uh, modify this camera. Yeah, that's right, just gonna modify this action camera. Um, essentially what we're going to do is we're gonna try to turn this into a night vision camera. What I read online is that once we take off the front panel, so I'm gonna go ahead and power this off and remove the battery. I think that's, yeah, it should be off now. So let's remove the battery. We should be, so once we remove these four screws, pop off their front panel, we should be able to get at this lens. So I'm gonna get a uh, screwdriver for that. There we go, there's one screw, two screw. Three screw. And four screw, there we go. I think I can just, yeah, there we go. I can just pry it from the SD card port slot. And then I'm trying to remember, do I have like a little spudger tool? There we go, got our little spudger tool, just had to fish it out of the attic. So I'm just gonna go along the edge here. Come on, don't break it. Ah, bingo! There we go. So it looks like there's a little bit of glue holding this. I'm hoping it's, it's super glue. Yeah, okay. So there's a couple methods of doing this. We could take the entire camera apart, or, not sure how well you can see that, but there's glue on these threads. This is an M12 thread on this here lens. So I'm going to need to, I believe I need to heat that up in order to get it to uh, unstick for me. So that's the next step of this project here. So unfortunately there is so much glue on this that I can't really seem to heat it up correctly. I tried a few methods. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. What I've seen online on a few other videos is that as you can see, I don't know if you can see, let me bump up the ISO. And as you can see, there's like a little circular tap screw thread right there where my uh, little sputcher is pointing at. There are two of those, and those attach the lens to that bottom printed circuit board. So what I have to do is I have to essentially gut this thing a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now. First things first, I'm gonna remove this connector here. There we go. Just gotta get these teensy tiny little screws. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the accompanying screws with their parts to avoid a bit of confusion here. Okay, there we go, we're starting to get somewhere. Come on. There you go. Oh, one more little connector I almost forgot. Always a good noise. There we go. Making some headway. So we got these two boards. It looks like one kind of slides out from the other. Oh, I see what I did. Seem to have bonded them together with this piece of little rubber or felt tape. So I need to take the screen off. Ah, there we go. And then it frees up this whole rest of the assembly here. Oh, there we go. Woo! All right, so now I have this uh, camera assembly 
here. Let's take it off its uh, plastic bracket. Not very, not a whole lot of screws in here, I'm surprised. There's one underneath this piece of plastic or foam, it looks. So I'm gonna figure a way to help remove that temporarily. There we go. Cool, almost done. Here's our main camera assembly. I'm gonna get my appropriate screwdriver. I'm actually surprised, I've only taken like 20 screws out of this thing. Okay, so as you can see, that is the infrared filter. Now it looks a little different than the ones I've seen online. This one is actually glued in. So, hmm, yeah, I'm gonna have to find a way to break that off essentially. So once I remove this filter, I should be able to like see infrared light in this, so it'll look really cool. Now, here's the thing. If I break, I'm not too worried about breaking this lens. I found you can get them on Amazon for 20 bucks. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna protect my eyes real quick. So I'm gonna be right back. I got my uh, shades on real quick. Cause I am gonna be break, probably gonna be breaking some glass from what I'm gonna be doing here. So I'm just gonna take this. Oh, there we go. I'm actually, well, I'm breaking it. Kind of. Ooh, hey, I think I did it. All right, I have some dust in there, so I'm gonna have to clean that off. Like I said, folks, the cool thing about this action camera is, A, it's dirt cheap, so if I bust it, I'm only out like 100, 120 bucks, and I barely use the thing as is, so I just wanted to experiment with it just to see if I can do this. So I'm just gonna try to remove all, any re remaining bits of broken glass. Good deal, so got this bad boy back together. Let's plop in our battery, make sure. Pretty sure I got everything connected back the way it was, should. Not too complicated of a uh, machine here. Oh, promising, promising. Oh, hey. It does seem a little, no, actually. Okay, yeah. It's definitely near focus for sure. Okay, as I press a button on the remote, nothing happens. As you can see, you can clearly see that IR LED on this remote control through the screen of the GetUp Get 2. So I say we have succeeded. Now one thing I did notice is that whenever I go far out on the, uh, whenever I try to focus far out on this thing, it gets pretty blurry. Like pretty nearsighted, it looks pretty good. Um, I may have to, what I'll probably do is get like one of those cheap reflow stations so I can just go ahead and melt that hot glue off the side, or I guess it's like super glue off the side, so I can actually go ahead and do a manual focus on this bad boy, and yeah, just scrape all that off so I can adjust that and probably modify this assembly so I can do such uh, types of focuses, because that would be really useful if I could adjust the focus on this thing. So I had a chance to go ahead and uh, get this lens freed up. What I did, was I used the tip of my soldering iron. I took this front cover off. This is currently off, by the way, for any of those uh, worrying. And I uh, took this cover off, and I basically just carefully uh, took the glue off or melted the glue off on the edges with the tip of my soldering iron. I made sure... One thing I do want to say is that the, uh, the actual outer threads that hook that connect the lens up to the actual circuit board or to the sensor itself. Those are plastic. However, I believe the lens itself is metal. So you want to be really careful when doing this and basically just try to take off as much as you can. Use a hobby knife once it gets nice and loose from being heated up and uh, just try not to melt the outer threads. Otherwise, you'll probably have a... Uh, you probably won't have too much luck getting this thing off. And then I just used a pair of pliers to grip on the outer edge of the lens and just carefully tweaked it off and made sure it didn't slip or anything. Just made sure it had plenty of grip and I was able to get it, uh, get it working, or I was able to work it loose pretty good. So now I'm able to 
adjust the focus. So that part is solved. So this is gonna be part one of this particular video series here in this infrared camera. Uh, I have a couple other ideas here. In the next video, I am going to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and purchase an infrared uh, LED flashlight to just try this thing out and see what I can do. Also, I'm going to print a uh, bracket to hold both this camera and the flashlight so I don't have to hold both and uh, just fiddle around with that. Plus, this particular camera doesn't really have that great of a um, grip. It has this like, it has this waterproof type deal, which may work. It has the standard GoPro mount on it, but I'm not a fan of this mount. I'd much rather just have a standard quarter 20 thread and attach this to maybe like a gimbal or, cause I have a, a gimbal I wanna have, I bought it pretty recently. Yeah, I bought this Ziyun Smooth 4. Really awesome gimbal. Uh, it's made for like phones, primarily the iPhone, which is the reason I got it. I got it for like super cheap for around 100 bucks from a buddy of mine. But yeah, I'm going to think I should be able to. Yeah, it looks like I should technically be able to mount this thing in here, but I'd like to 3D print a thing for this to mount to quarter inch 20 threads, which that would be pretty nice, I think. Let's see here. Let's check and see what this gimbal has. Okay, it looks like you can just rotate that. So there's no actual uh, way to just mount a quarter 20 to this gimbal without any modification or any sort of custom bracketry, which is something I'll probably just end up doing just so I can get a good screen preview. Yeah, I should be able to do something like this maybe. And I can, I think I, this gimbal is adjustable. So I can go ahead and just move that in a bit and uh, that should compensate for the out, out of balance here and maybe get the flashlight over here or something crazy like that or maybe just have the flashlight mounted somewhere else. Don't know, that'll be on the next episode. So if you all wanna see my crazy antics and trying to get this night vision camera working, which so far, so it seems very, very promising. I cannot wait to get that infrared flashlight. Got one of those super bright, like four LED type deals. So obviously we have this cool gimbal thing to look forward in the future as well as just uh, getting that light set up and testing this bad boy out. But another uh, possible third video I have lined up is getting a some sort of glass type thing, some sort of like glasses set up where I can actually use this as like a night vision camera just to, I don't know, do cool stuff in the dark or uh, go camping or who knows what kind of cool stuff, cool hijinks we can get away with. If anyone has any idea for like any sort of camera, it needs to be an HDMI in or HDMI capable monitor. Um, I'm not sure what resolution this thing outputs to. I would assume like a, a 720p would probably suffice. It can be like one eye that could, that could probably work or one of those things where it's just like a viewfinder where it's like a screen and then one of those like uh, th like types of viewfinders you put over like a camera, like LCD, that, that might work as well. So yeah, uh, comment away if you have any idea what I can use. But that's gonna be about it for this video here. Like I said, uh, like the video if you liked it and say stay subscribed, subscribe if you haven't already. And just to see these future updates of this crazy project and other cool videos and have a great day.